What does that tell us today? I mean, it was, it was an awful first half. Uh, was that because of the tension in the game? Or were they happy enough? Were they thinking of going for a draw, do you think? Well, let's be generous. Let's say the occasion maybe got to them the tension a little bit, but the quality was lacking anywhere in the pitch in the first half. And, and what we got in the second half was what we hoped for. We got a more positive approach from Sweden. A lot of it was some balls into the box, but they looked dangerous. Isaac got on the ball and showed us on several occasions why he's being talked up the way he is. The goal, though it came from a penalty, I think was deserved. I think Sweden were the better team in the second half. And the response from Slovakia was exactly what we wanted from a neutral's point of view. They had a right go at the end and right up until the 95th, 96th minute were giving it a go. So big result for Sweden. Now four points should be enough to put them through. That kind of justifies their, their style against Spain as well, doesn't it? They've got their points on the board and they're looking at the last 16. Yeah, exactly. We touched on it at half time. Could they change the kind of approach to the game, out of the game in the second half? And they did, in fairness, they, they got us Slovakia a bit more, they created a few more chances and I think they deserved the goal. I think Slovakia might be kicking themselves a little bit because I think towards the end of that first half they did show a little bit of initiative in getting at Sweden but as we said, the, the way the game planned out we probably thought maybe Slovakia might have been okay with a draw, I haven't got those three points in the first but I think Sweden well deserved in the end. Yeah, they only kind of showed urgency in the, the, the latter stages when they realised they had to. Yeah, exactly and I think that's, you expect that don't you, as we said, I think what was at, at stake in the game, as we said, Slovakia probably happy enough to, to see out with a draw, but as I said, I think Sweden deserved the win in the end. They went at them a little bit more. The little bit of class from Isaac in particular showed, and um, yeah, they got the deserved win in the end. And what does it say about the format of this competition? You know, the, the 24 teams. Are we going to see more games like this now, as, you know, the third game of the, of the, of the group? I, I don't know if the format is, is, is the reason we saw what we saw in the first half. Do you mean by the fact that it was so dull and, mm. and, and drab? I think that can happen. You can watch cup finals and they're like that. Um, but the quality on show was poor. Um, Slovakia came so close. Like, had they held out or gone on a late equaliser there or not conceded the penalty, we'd be sitting there talking about a really, really big achievement by a country that for the second time in a row, two tournaments have got to the last 16. So small margins at this level, um, the penalty kick away from, from, from qualifying. But... Uh, they'll have a difficult task now in the final game. Poland and Spain have to play tomorrow, so we yeah. don't know what that's, this group is going to look big like. Now, isn't it? Yeah, we don't know what this group is going to look like going into the final game, but Sweden are sitting pretty at the moment. Yes, welcome back. We've been watching Sweden get the better narrowly of Slovakia. Uh, it took a penalty to do it, and do uh, you think it was deserved overall? I think the win was deserved overall, yeah. I think they did enough. Um, and if you look at them over the two games, they did absolutely enough in the first one and did what was required here in the second one. I just wonder about this Isaac flick. That is absolutely superb if he meant it. Um, Kwaisan, <laughs> really good feet, really quick. And he just, he's just tricked the goalkeeper in thinking he was going to get there. It was a penalty kick. I don't think Slovakia can have any complaints. I don't think this is savable at all. It was so well hit and into the corner. But the moment of skill from Isaac beforehand to flick it on around the corner, if he meant that, that was absolutely superb. And I think like Sweden were the ones who did try and come out and play a bit more, didn't they? Yeah, well, the onus was on them. We spoke about that mm. at half-time, that they kind of needed to go and take the game to Slovakia a little bit. And they did, which was good to see. They created their own chances as well within the game. And I think, as you said, it was a deserved, a deserved winner. Obviously, Slovakia threw everything at them towards the end to try and get that equaliser, but I think Sweden did create the right chances and, and they got their well-deserved goal. Let's have a look at some of uh, what they did because uh, they'll have to reproduce this. Uh, they're in the next, uh, ne the next phase, though, no? Yeah, again, I think Isaac, again, we'll talk a little bit more about him later. He was involved in a lot of it. Uh, Augustin with a header here, well saved. Um, the Nilsson as well, who's, who's good in the air and a danger from, from set pieces. Again, Isaac here is very good in the ball, drags the ball forward, gets him up the pitch. And I think it, it comes back to class and he gets it, the shot off in the end. And, and look, as I said, they, they pressed a little bit more towards in that, in that second half and, and they got their just, award, just rewards with that penalty. But I think a uh, be much better uh, second half performance. Was, was there something about the halftime, do you think, that uh, the coach kind of uh, reimagined it for them? I don't know. I think probably a mix of both teams. I think, as we said, Slovakia probably trying to hold on to that draw and maybe sat back a little bit, didn't press them a bit. But a couple of changes as well within the game probably brought a little bit more liveliness to, to the Swedish attacking. Let's talk about uh, Isaac then. He has appeared in most of our uh, analysis so far. Uh, I hear he's been linked with Liverpool. Um, maybe uh, <laughs> Liverpool are looking at someone uh, as talented as him to replace one of their uh, fab three. Um, is he, is he up to it? Is he, is he at that level, do you think? 
What he showed in the first game, he showed glimpses, um, which is why we spoke about him beforehand. If you give him the ball and he's running at defenders, he looks like he's lethal. Like the pace, the quick feet, the skill, he can drop a shoulder either way and he's got a decent final ball as well. Um, today, he, he did the very same in the second half. Um, is he good enough? There's a lot of, you know, we can think of loads of examples of players that don't do much at club football and then shine brightly in a tournament and get a big move. But that's not fair to say of this fella because he's been doing really well. He's only 21, he's only young, but he's had a great season in Spain. He had a couple of shots from distance. This went wide, uh, the deflection off Skriniar. In the air as well, he's athletic, he got up really well. But th this is the stuff that's just so impressive and <laughs> there's so few players can do this and not just have the, the mentality or the positivity or the confidence to try this but the ability also to do this he's at this point gone around two or three players a couple of them for a second time and forces a really good save from the goalkeeper so there, there, there's a there's a balance to this Sweden team defensively we know what they can do they showed us that in abundance and, and they've got someone like him up in attack and international football you, you know, we spoke a moment ago, like, what, what, what is the true standard or what's required to get to a tournament? Often teams are here because they have one or two players in key areas, Wales is the obvious example, who can make a difference in a game. Um, we don't have them at the moment in Ireland, but, but Sweden do. So they're in the last 16, and with someone like him on form, who knows? According to reports, they're saying that Liverpool have been scouting him as a possible future replacement for, for Bobby Firmino. Yeah, look, I think it's a lot of pressure on him, isn't it, to replace a player like him. I think Firmino has been excellent for Liverpool over the last number of seasons. But look, he showed potential. He so, showed uh, sparks of what he can do. I think particularly when he's running at players and he's kind of awkward to a certain extent. So players don't really know what he's going to do. So yeah. he's managed to skip by players. Would, like, you not, would you not kind of figure him out quickly enough, though? Maybe. Obviously, as the tournament goes on, we'll probably see that, won't we? I think he's, as I said, he's shown in the last two games, he's probably shown little bits of what he can do. And, and the test will be, can he do it at the latter stages is when he plays against maybe better opposition. Um, as I said, he's done well against Spain, though. Good, good defence with not a lot of, of the ball, not a lot of help up there. So I think he, he has shown, as I said, sparks of what he can do. There, there are some players, like you just said, there. You, you, you can, to use your phrase, figure them out. You know what they're going to do. They're a little bit predictable and you can guard against them. But one of the things about him is he's, he's so unpredictable. When he's the ball at his feet, like the obvious thing you think of doing is close down space, get a man tight, make it difficult for him, don't let him turn. I assume that was the intention with every player that got near him today. Yeah in those clips we showed and some we could have repeated from the Spain game. Knowing what you want to do and being able to do it are two entirely different things and when you're as quick and as skillful and as positive as him and as full of confidence he clearly seems to be, um, it's easier said than done. I'm slightly dubious but according to his stats, you know, he has had a career best campaign, scored 17 and 44 for uh, Sociedad, won the Copa del Rey, so he's 21, yeah. he's young. <laughs> like I, th I think... <laughs> I, I, I think, like you mentioned there, Liverpool and, and be, I think Dortmund were linked with him. Lots of teams will be scouting him. I think that, well, I hope the days are gone where a team, first of all, can be surprised by what a person can do or that a scouting department would buy a player multi, multi-million pound deal based on one or two big games in a tournament. We, we saw that in earlier tournaments 10, 20 years ago, but th those days surely are gone. Mm. It's the days of Y Scout, isn't it? And everyone knows everything about everyone. There are no surprises. Like yeah. if you're 12 years old with access to the internet, you know everything about everyone. Like yeah. there's, there's, there's no surprises anymore. Well, what do we know about Slovakia after today? I mean, they're still in it. Yeah, and again, I think, as I said, it was a difficult day for them today. Obviously, they got the good win against Poland in the first game. They're coming into this game maybe thinking, will a point do them? They kind of, I think, if I'm honest, I thought they maybe showed a little bit too much. I don't even know if it's respect, but in the, towards the end of the first half, I thought they were at their best when they were kind of getting at them and trying to get, as I said, Hamstick on the ball, Duda on the ball. And they didn't really have much to show. This was a chance from Kuka. It ended up being offside. Um, that just shows you how little chances they had that we had to use this clip. Um, and towards the end, we had Kuka shot from distance as well that just went over. But look, I think it was a difficult game for them, as I said, because they probably hoped to get a draw. They didn't get the draw in the end and, and they'll have to go back to the drawing band. Now, remember then. I asked you to imagine that it was Ireland today <laughs> <laughs> from the very beginning, that it was the Aviva Stadium, that we were Slovakia. Um, how would we feel now? You know, we've won one, we've lost one. It's a classic Ireland almost uh, pattern in a tournament. Yeah, well, I think... We're going to draw one next? From Slovakia's point of view, obviously, it's you have to face Spain in the next game and that's a, mm. a tough one. So it would have been nice for them to have it's sewn up with this game and um, that's not the case really. I think Sweden obviously 
have took the upper hand in this game. Um, facing Spain, the next game is going to be a difficult one for them. But again, as you say, in bringing it back to Ireland, will we be happy if we sat back and lost that game 1-0? Probably mm. not. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a difficult one for them now in the next game. But you'd understand the approach because whatever about a team's strength or weaknesses or how you'd want to play, every game is played in a context. And the context of today's was that they came into it with three points, knowing that one point is enough. Then a stream come true, you've qualified before the Spain game. So again, hypothetical world where this is us, we'd be sitting there really hoping that by the time we play Spain, that either Spain are through and play a second string side like Italy did five years ago, or, or, or that we've done enough. So it, it, it's going to be very difficult for them now. Again, margins are so small. If they didn't concede that penalty kick, they'd be through at this point, where now they're facing a scenario where they've got to get a positive result against Spain which is going to be very difficult. I know Spain got a bit of stick the other night from having so much possession and not creating, but you, 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 they'd frighten the life out of it if you were Slovakia. The template is there and how you play against them. Just keep everyone behind the ball, make it as compact and as difficult, concede no space, have no ambition going forward. Sweden, Sweden have shown how you can get a point against Spain. I, I don't know if this Slovakia team are capable of it. What you're basically saying, though, the great John Giles mantra, you know, take every game on its merits. You kind of have to, like, if you were Slovakia and, and you were going gung-ho today, you'd be asking the manager, why? why? Why did you feel that was the appropriate thing to do? Because you've got Spain next and you've just got three points, a draw will achieve exactly what you came here to achieve. Let's have a look at the table now and see exactly uh, where we stand with it. I mean, uh, it's, it's finally poised. Uh, Spain and Poland, of course, will determine an awful lot. But yeah, Slovakia must think, uh, you know, yeah, we, we, we're, still, we're still in it. Yeah, um, I, I, that's what they'll be telling themselves in the dressing room afterwards, because that's absolutely true. They are still in it. Let's say Spain, we're in the oh, what ifs here in our territory. Let's say Spain beat Poland. They go join top with Sweden um, and, and they'll still need a positive result themselves to maybe decide where they're going to finish in the group. So the task now facing Slovakia is very, very difficult. And, but here's like our Spain and Poland looking at finishing first, finishing second and whether third place will make it. I mean, you must start worrying at this point about all the obvious possible I think scenarios. You'd, 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 go in it, <laughs> you'd go in it to win it. Like there's, <laughs> if you're Spain... Like there, there, there's no hint in that dressing room that anyone should be talking about going into any game settling for a draw, not with their squad. And I don't think any of them, certainly not in this group, are in a position to be daft enough to start trying to plot whether it's better to finish first or second and making like strategic decisions or team selections based on that. Um, so it's an open group at the moment, but it's not so open when you look at Spain's quality. Yeah, you're wearing Spain colours, Seth. Do you think they're still the favourites in this group? Um, yeah, I think so. I think with the quality they showed and I think um, the chances Morata missed in the first game, probably I think if you have a player on form, whether it will be himself or Moreno playing up front, I don't know. But they had the chances within that game, although Sweden did make it difficult and did limit their chances. They've got the quality within the team. It's just about maybe that final end product. And Another big one coming up, that's for sure. Well.